<laughs> Hello, America. <laughs> All right, so we're here for another episode of Metropolis After Hours. And uh, tonight we want to talk a little bit about uh, the various companies and what they're doing, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, and who's, who's really getting close to the mark. And we wanted to show you a few example books. And uh, so go ahead, John, let's uh, kick it off. Well, since I am the uh, kid, the one that orders the kids' comics around here, we're going to start it off with Archie. And whoever the CEO of Archie Comics is right now, God bless you, sir, because you are doing a fine job. Yeah, Archie is selling better than it has in years for us. Uh, I think it's yep. the fork in the road story that's doing it right. for us, and, right? And um, the fork in the road story, for those of you who don't know, is basically it's a futuristic type tale where first Archie marries Ver Veronica, and then later on he marries Betty. Uh, um, not in a polygamy kind of way. In a, <laughs> in an One at a time. In an Elseworlds kind of way, where he comes to a fork in the road, and then he takes this fork, and he marries Veronica, and then he exactly. takes the other fork, and he marries Betty. Yeah. Exactly. So. And, um, <laughs> it, the story was written quite well, especially the half where he marries Betty. Um, the only problem I had with uh, the Veronica issues was the artwork, um, as some of our customers pointed out, could have been a bit better for such a main event. Yeah. Uh, other than that, very well written and it got a lot of attention, so good work on you, Archie. Really good. And also, um, I wanted to promote our good friend Bat and Lash, who does um, a great book called Supernatural Law, is now writing Archie and Friends. Uh, it's a sequel to a book that came out last year called freshman year right. and so this is a freshman sequel. year was great by the way so. yeah very very well done it was all about Archie and the gang in their freshman year and this is kind of what happens like in between like things you didn't see during that story and then finally good old Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> Uh, which is probably their hottest selling book and does really well. Definitely. Um, Great so kids, yeah. Right now, Archie's going full steam ahead, so good on you, Archie. Uh, next up, we have one of my favorites. Sorry to grab and look away for a minute, folks. Uh, Boom Studios. Boom Studios really came alive about what? Uh, when they started doing their licensed stuff, uh, it's been just about six months or so, I think, that they've really come alive. Yeah, but they've been around for two, Couple two or years. three years. Yeah. 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 Mark, is that Mark Wade? That's Mark, Mark Wade's Wade. company. Yeah. Uh, he's the CEO. Great writer, and he's the uh, CEO, editor-in-chief of, of Boom Studios. and. They're doing a lot of licensed properties right now. What that means is uh, like 28 Days, Days later, later, which is kind of like a moody movie out adaptation. Um, um, uh, Irredeemable is, is original. Irredeemable is an original one. Um, yeah, and Farscape. it's really cool. Uh, they're doing Farscape for all you Farscape fans like myself. A bunch of Muppet stuff. A bunch of Muppet stuff, which we'll get to in a minute. But their original stuff, like Irredeemable, I just started reading this. I cannot recommend it enough. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, it's very dark. Um, it's about a superhero gone... Bad. Gone to be like the worst, the worst villain you could ever, ever imagine, <laughs> as if Superman went totally evil and came after the Justice League. Yeah, it's so terrible. So if that gets but your interest it's right there... Good. Check it out. Yeah, Mark Wade is a great writer, so. Um, they also have limited series right now, like Dingo um, and Nola, that are also quite good and well worth your time. But perhaps my favorite, because I am the uh, kids man, is they're doing kids comics, Muppet Show, Monsters, Inc., Wizards of Mickey, <laughs> Walt Disney Comics featuring Mickey right now. And my beloved Uncle Scrooge, along with Toy Story and Wally, -E and many more. Um, their kids' comics are really good, really well done. If you get a chance, check it out. Um, and also, right now, there's Bongo, Bongo. Comics. Um, right now, Sergio Aragonis just took over The Simpsons. I'm uh, really looking forward to this issue. It just came out this week, so pick it up if you love Sergio, or even if you don't, if you love Simpsons, pick it up. Um, Dark Horse, Hellboy. <gasps> Love Who Hellboy. Bent that cover? Who bent the cover? Not me, I swear. Do not do this to your own comic books. <laughs> Hellboy, um, Gru, which is hilarious. Uh, Yosagi Ojimbo. Things are going good at Dark Horse. The only thing I wish was a little less Star Wars, a little less manga, and more um, something else. Give me more than just the licensed stuff, they're, if you would, They're Dark actually Horse. looking right now. They've actually asked the retailers what Dark Horse should be looking for for licensed properties. Good, So, good. yeah, so they're looking for a lot of stuff. They're, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is really cool, too. Written by Joss Whedon, the originator of the series, and he's continued it on in the comics. So, and to top it all off, Green the Lantern. Big Daddy right now, oh, DC. Comics, Blackest Night, the big dog daddy of the pack. Right. Um, 
And Blackest Night can't go wrong. Just huge seller. Batman and Great Robin. Story yeah. too. What can be said about Batman and Robin? I did not like Batman and Robin the book itself at first. Uh, Grant Morrison's writing a little too cryptic for me, and I don't care for Damien. It's you well, know, he, but he's, that's, he's that's worse than writing. Jason. Uh, well, uh, that's arguable. Uh, he he's <laughs> less tolerable than Jason Todd is. He I'd is, rather have Jason Todd he's again. He's a snotty little brat. But uh, and I the, love him. But he's Bruce Wayne's son. <laughs> yeah, but the, the storyline that has turned it around is the two-part Blackest Night. You know, spelled differently. Uh, that is going on right now, where they Blackest uh, Knight. Yeah, can get. where uh, Dick yeah. Grayson, the new Batman, has taken. And Bruce Wayne's corpse and throwing it in a Lazarus pit, and that's all I'll say. And oh, it's great. <laughs> also, Superman books I enjoy, even though Superman is not currently in his books. Check into that. Um, for kids' comics, you have Billy Batson and the Magic of Shazam, Gotta go. uh, Tiny Titans, all kinds of great kids' comics coming out of DC, and of course, Vertigo, unwritten. Uh, Day Tripper. Unwritten you is really cool. You can't go wrong with those. Um, unwritten, Day Tripper, Sweet Tooth, my own favorite. I love Sweet Tooth. Okay, now we got to move um, on. And now we're going <laughs> to we'll, we'll catch our... up on what they're doing wrong and what they're <laughs> doing our, right next time. But our faithful crew is telling us... Come on. Yeah. Uh, okay, real quick topic. This is where I jump in. Um, DC has announced their their new, new core leadership lineup yes. for uh, for DC Entertainment. Uh, we got Dan Dido and uh, Jim Lee being co uh, y'all co, uh, co editors in co chief. editors in chief. I guess it uh, is. Jim Lee needs no introduction to comic book fans. Right. He's still the definitive X Men artist, and he knows his comics. And Jeff Johns is the chief creative officer, which makes me feel better about yes, the announcement that director yes. Christopher Nolan is will be heading the new Superman movie. I'm not sure that... I, I, uh, he, he's overseeing. He's not yeah. directing, but he's overseeing. Yeah, he's he's going to pick the direction for it, but I don't like his direction on Batman. If, if you're interested in... dark. If you're interested in my reasons why, drop by the shop, I'll tell you. Um... And, uh, I'm just not sure it's right for Superman. Yeah, exactly. We don't need Superman to be a psychological thriller or a gritty crime drama. Right. And we have Irredeemable from Bo from uh, Boom Studios. Yeah, exactly. So if Chris right. Nolan's going to do that, hopefully Jeff Johns will be there to say, no, this is how you do Superman, Chris. Yeah. Uh, let's hope he jumps right in there. So, yeah, all right. And so, uh, so, uh, so, yeah. So the new creative team, we have great uh, hope for uh, the the. For me, the brightest day, you know, finding yeah. out that Jeff Johns is going to be absolutely uh, very D high DC's up. Yeah, I was very film properties could not be in up. better hands. Yeah, I, I think right now you're going to see DC really consolidating itself as a company, really starting to gel and focus. And uh, I know that right now Marvel is playing catch up. So, you know. Now, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> to transition very fast, now we have a little segment uh, that we've shown you before, but we're going to have another installment, Get to Know Metropolis. So if you'll just uh, follow me over here, Mr. Camera Guy. Um, I'd like to show you a very special part of Metropolis Comics that I've spearheaded myself called Metropolis Grab Bags, if you'll see the sign over here. Uh, basically what we do, it's great to get kids into, uh, kids into comics if they haven't read them before. You, what you get is... Ten great comics, you know, not mediocre comics, not quarter bin comics. You get ten great comics that would normally be t about two fifty each, uh, all in a pack. Ten in a pack for five dollars. Yeah, we always have great stuff in here. You, here you can see Amazing Spider-Man on the other side, Justice League of America. We uh, always try to keep this full. We have it on both sides, so if you walk in, you'll you'll see there's plenty to look through and plenty to pick on. You know pick up. So uh, that's about it. That's going to do it for this episode of Metropolis After Hours. I'm Flynn Cook. That's uh, John Barry and Gail Burt and uh, we'll see you guys next time.